All right, Piranha Pursuit. This game is... This game is mediocre. Uh, this game basically requires the one player to make a mistake. The three players are fine, they have a chance, but the one player, the basically, one player mashes B to skateboard and jumps over logs and rocks. If they, if they are perfect and don't mess up, they automatically win. There's nothing, the, there's no counterplay to the three players. That's why this is mediocre. It's still tense, the, the, the setting's interesting, you're riding on a cloud, the three players are riding on a cloud, uh, ground pounding water onto a piranha plant. It's interesting, but it's mediocre because it's weighted in, it's weighted against the three to the one. Memory match. I don't know. I may move this one around. Memory match is not a good mini game. It's too easy, or it's very. It's too simple. It's too easy and too simple. It's basically baby's first like flipping over card matching game. It's not hard. It's not hard at all. It's 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 hella easy. Any 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 seven year old can do it, which I guess that's the point. This is a kid's game essentially. Ground pound. Ground pound is also awful. Ground pound is worse than memory match. There's literally no challenge to ground pound. There are five pegs you need to ground pound in ground pound, and you can easily see where they are. There 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 are five correct ones and and eight uh are uh or uh seven bad ones. There's twelve pegs there. You can easily see where the five you're supposed to ground pound are. Even when the butterflies cover them to hide them, you still get to see the beginning, and they still look different under the butterflies, you can easily tell. Ground Pound is hella probably almost the worst minigame in the game. It's a one-player minigame, so you just have to sit there and watch the one player easily get 10 coins while you take a nap for 30 seconds. Crazy Cutters. Crazy Cutters is a pretty great minigame. It, it's scoring system's a little jank, do that old classic scoring system jank, but overall it's a great minigame. You basically have to trace the outline of either a Boo, a Bomb, or a Goomba. And if you score above 80, everybody can win this minigame. As long as you score above 80, you get 10 coins, no matter how many or few players do that. <laughs> Odd, it's just really fun to play, I always look forward to it. it it's fun tracing around, it, it practices good... It practices good hand-eye coordination with the control stick. It, it's a good minigame. All right, next up, facelift. Facelift is iconic. Facelift is iconic because this makes a return in Mario Party 2. Now, not all minigames that make a return in Mario Party 2 are iconic, but facelift is iconic. Facelift is a fun game where you get a face in the middle. You have to, It's always Bowser in one, but in, in Mario Party 2 can be one of the uh, one of the players on the board. It, you basically you get a face in the direct middle. You as one of the four. Well, as four players have to copy the face the best you can by tweaking its eyebrows, cheeks, mouth, hair, etc. It's inspired by the movable Mario face from Mario 64. They basically turn that into a minigame, and it's hella fun! Again, this is a minigame everybody can win if you score above 90. Coin Shower Flower is a bad game. It is heavily skewed in the one person. Uh, yes, anyway, Coin Shower Flower. Uh, heavily skewed in the one person's favor. Not a great minigame. The, the the object of the game is that one player stands on the sunflower and gets rained on coins, and the people the three people in the boat on the underside of the flower in the water get the get the scraps that are left over if if the one player happens to miss coins. The flower is so goddamn big, you'll never miss coins, and the one player will never fall off. Even worse, if the one player falls off, the game ends. Yeah, so this mini game is heavily skewed in the one player. It's not great. If you're the one player, you're having a nutworthy time though. You are getting paid as fuck, but. In all fairness, it's not a good minigame. Pipe Maze! Pipe Maze will go in the not good territory, because this game's very interesting. Though it's a 1 versus 3 minigame again, and the one player gets to choose which pipe the treasure just falls down. But here's the thing, while you're staring at the bottom of this map, the camera scrolls up very fast, and you have to try and figure out which pipe is yours through the ever-scrolling web of pipes as the camera scrolls extremely fast. Uh, I'm sometimes good at this minigame, sometimes I can keep my eye on where my pipe is. It all just depends. It's a complete- it's- it basically boils down to a complete random minigame. <laughs> yeah, thank hey, thanks you. for the 20 bitos. Shell Shock Prime shared 20 bits. But overall, this this is just a this is just a, a basically toss up ten coin mini game, so it's it's not good. Treasure divers, no. I don't. This is treasure divers. 
I always, I always, whatever. Uh, four player treasure, free for all treasure divers, whatever. I, um, this mini game's all right. It's pretty fair. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Anyway, four player treasure divers. It's pretty all right. It's fair. There, there's enough big chests for people to get. Deep sea divers. There we go. Thanks, old man moment. <laughs> Tra yeah. Uh, this mini game's all right. You basically dive down. There's and you need to collect a chest and you have to swim it back up to the top of the water. There's a shark swimming back and forth. There's Gargora swimming back and forth. There's some bloopers. That that it, if they hit you, you drop a chest. It's fair, somewhat. Uh, this mini game. Yeah, this mini game's all right. It's fine. No one really complains when it's brought up. It's fine. You just uh, just chance for everybody to get coins. Balloon Burst. This one's iconic. Everyone remembers Balloon Burst, and it even does return in Mario Party 2 as a 2v2 minigame. But four-player Balloon Burst is iconic. Basically, you have to alternate A and Z, or A and B, to blow up a balloon. You basically pump a balloon in good rhythm timing to, to pop a Bowser balloon. First one pops, it gets the 10 coins. This is also a Bowser survival minigame. First one pops, it doesn't get their coin stolen from Bowser. So, this, so these these two minigames, funnily enough, double as both a Bowser survival and just a regular four-player minigame. You're going to bed? Okay, no problem, dude. Take it easy. Keep away. Keep away is all right. Keep away is all right. Um... It's just it's just a work together everyone wins 10 coins minigame. It's kind it's on the easy side too. Basically your job is to bring this key up and up to this steel drum here and, and slam dunk it in there. It's hella easy. These these I don't even know these spiked Koopas, I guess. I don't I actually don't really know their official name. It's not Koopa Troll. Uh, these spiked Koopas try and block you and steal the key from you. If they, if they grab the key, it's game over. And I think everyone loses five coins. But it's hella easy to avoid them. You can not only pass the key, but you can just straight up jump over these guys. And these guys can't jump after you either. It's basically just an easy minigame where everyone wins 10 coins. It's alright. As far as the economy in Mario Party 1 goes. Handcar Havoc, we were just talking about this one. Iconic. Iconic minigame, it even returns in Mario Party 2. Uh, Handcar Havoc in Mario Party 1 is, is, is actually tougher than Mario Party 2. Because in Mario Party 1, you can fall off. And and just and just watch the other player. Mario Party 2, you can't fall off. They they make it unfall offable. And so in a sense it's easier. But Mario Handcar Havoc, great atmosphere. You're both handcar havocing over I like the Mario Party 1 version better, technically. Because I like the atmosphere better. You're handcar havocing over a giant a sea of lava. And if you fall, it's not pretty. But you need to have good uh, you have to have good button mashing and good braking ability to round corners properly. It requires a decent amount of skill and know-how to play the game, and it's iconic and 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 in there. This is such a tough mini game to to rate. It's a phenomenal it's a phenomenal mini game. You get easy money from it, but it's not exactly fair to get. Yeah, I know. It's it's technically. I'm gonna go mediocre. I'm gonna go mediocre because it's a. This mini game is phenomenal. If the, this is a one player mini game, if the one player gets this mini game, it's hella easy to get over thirty coins. Just it's hella easy. You basically just jump on piranha plants and they give you one coin each, and you just jump on all of them in, in succession, and you get money easy, easy. It's hella easy. It's arguably even easier than memory match. And it gives you 30 plus coins. Obviously, if you're the one player, you're nutting as fuck. If you're just the other people watching, like, damn, this dude got another 30 plus coins. I'll leave it at mediocre. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just, again, Mario Party 1 inbound. Slot Car Derby. I like Slot Car Derby a lot, actually. <laughs> I like Slot Car Derby a lot. This game... You know what? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna... Oh, part of me wants to put it as iconic. Because it's the final game in, in Minigame Island, the first player. I'll put it... I'll, I'll be... I'll be... I'll, I won't go crazy. I'll put it at top of great. I love Slot Car Derby. Slot Car Derby is a great minigame. It requires a vast amount of skill. You need to learn... Slot Car Derby is basically a game where you race around a track, and you need to 
and you need to let go of the gas. The gas is basically pressing down the stick in one direction. You need to let go of the gas at certain turns to make sure you don't spin out. There's a lot of technical know-how to slot car derby. What turns you need to brake on. For example, you don't have to brake on the outside turns. You can keep the gas held down. If you're on the outside ring of the map at any time during the caution turns, you don't have to brake. You can keep the stick held down. There's a, there's a lot of timing, rhythm, and know-how to slot car derby. I love this game to death. It's one of the harder games to play, and people get frustrated and don't know how to play it. But that's why it's also the final game of Minigame Island, and Toad beat, bops your ass at it. Ghost Guess. Ghost Guess gets top of all right. This game requires also again, another. Uh, this is a one-player game that requires a lot of skill, especially skills with keeping your eyes peeled. Basically, there's a circle of ghosts around you, and you need to find out the ghost circle around you. You need to find out which ghost literally moves first. You can do that by either staring at the ghost itself or the shadow on the wall. You can visually use your eyes to tell which ghost moves first, depending on the, but depending on how quick they are. It 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 it, it it's sort of bit of it's sort of bit of a optical illusion eye teaser because you can sometimes get mixed up. You sometimes can't find it. You can panic, and if you take too long, the ghost swallow you and you lose five points. This game is pretty good. It puts you under pressure and and really requires you to pay attention. And I like having eagle eyes. This is a this is a good mini game. It, it, it <coughs> again just because the mini game's frustrating doesn't mean it's bad. It means sorry. Some mini games require skill. Some mini games are baby's first memory match and literal can't lose. Some mini games are damn. Here's some skills you gotta use. <laughs> Hot pop bomb. This minigame is bottom of all right. Uh, this minigame, you basically pass around a bob on. Nah, mm. Actually, no, top of mediocre. This minigame, you pass around a bob... Uh, no, hold on. There we go. You, you, you pass around a bob on. And the, when, the, when the bob explodes, that player loses 15 coins and gives 5 each each other player. So basically, if you're in the lead, you're going to get targeted and thrown the bomb a lot. And you can even do a little technique in this game, in this mini game, where you hold the bomb till the very last uh, time uh, time tick. The bomb gets bigger and burstier when it's about to explode, and you can pass to somebody of your choice. To be fair, I've never mastered that technique. I always just play the game normally, but I, of course, I've seen it done. So yeah, this mini game conceptually is fine, but you you can bully one player, and well, I mean that's how it, that's just the, how the chips fall. People were mean in 1998. Tightrope Treachery also, you know what, Tightrope Treachery can get right under Piranha Pursuit because it suffers from the same problem. The one player is weirdly skewed in a good favor. You may, the one player has to bounce on a tightrope while three people have to control their boat and shoot cans at the same time, which can get a little hard to do for the three players. It's sometimes hard to manage your distance along with your movement to manage a cannon shot because a cannon always fires at the same range. It's sometimes hard to line up. That's why in the Mario Party 2 version Rainbow Run, the game moves your cannon for you. So you only have to focus on your angle. Either way though, the cannibals have a weird lack of knockback in the Mario Party 1 version. It's really hard to get the one player off, even with the wind that's blowing and the cannon shooting. It's hard to get the one player off. The cannons just straight up don't have enough knockback in the Mario Party 1 version. This minigame is vastly improved in the Mario Party 2 version. I'd even put it under bottom of grade if I was doing Mario Party 2. They improved this minigame. It's just mediocre in one. Ah, tug of war. Literally hurts to play. <laughs> tug of war. Tug of Tug of War is probably gonna get bottom of awful. I know you're right. I know, I know, I know. The category is right here. I'm gonna throw you a little curveball. Tug of War it, it involves rotating the control stick, the infamous rotating control stick. It's one of those mini games. Does it hurt to play? Yes. Does it does it get does it really get people risking pain for reward? Yes. I I know you probably think I'm crazy, but hear me out on this. Hear me out on this. The literal hurts to play minigame is bashing cash. This this game causes so much emotional pain. Bashing cash is a 1v3 minigame where the one player can't do anything except lose coins. The three people chase around the one player in the Bowser suit, and every time they hit him, they lose five, five coins spurt out of them and can be collected by the other players. You can collect your five coins that burst out of you, 
but you literally can only go net zero or net loss in this game. This game literally emotionally hurts me to play. I would rather play any other rotating control stick mini game just because I, I can bear pain. I can bear physical pain better. This game literally emotionally hurts to play. It this this will make a grown man cry. If you're the one player in the if you're in the one v three and just rotating through the mini game listening to see Bash and Cash, you just re, you just regret all your life choices when this game's chosen. This is I'm even gonna say the hot take now. This is probably the worst mini game in the entire game. I know, I know, I I know. Considering I know, this this is my curveball hot take. This game literally hurts to play emotionally. Which, in my opinion, is worse than physically. Grab bag is also not great. It takes place in the same arena, ironically enough. Basically, you have to get behind someone and mash B to steal coins out of their bag. So one person get targeted. They have a lot of coins. One play again. The grabbing is a little weird. You can also do some good avoidance strats. There's skill at this game. It's just very slippery and very not fun to play it's just sometimes sometimes you get grabbed while facing somebody the the hit detection is a little weird it's it's just bleh uh buried treasure buried treasure is a great no let me not go crazy buried treasure is an all right mini game because the treasure chest can be near somebody at the beginning and they could just get a lucky break and get it right away without any chance of getting it that really happens. I mean, that happens every once in a while. Basically, you have to dig through dirt, and eventually you'll find a sign or the treasure itself. And basically, whoever uncovers it and gets their body on top of it, like when Mr. Krabs dives on the table in the board game episode of SpongeBob, yar! <laughs> and he crushes them. <laughs> that that's that's lit. That's literally what you have to do to bury treasure. Um, this game can be a little, this game can be a little fickle, like I said. The treasure can spawn right near one person, they can just luckily get it. So, there's a bit of luck factor, and the sign can completely point you towards another direction, and one player can still be closer. But, overall, it's an alright minigame. It's, an, it also, it also taxes button mashing skills. So, if you're a fast button mashing, you'll dig fast, rather than someone who's slow. Coin Block Bash. <laughs> I'm gonna put this game at the bottom of alright. I, this game is funny, because I like to bully the person with the hammer. So basically, there are three players and one person has a hammer. The... <laughs> um, the, the player with the hammer moves slower than the, other, than the other three players, but can break blocks in one hit. But the, the, the key is, you just want to stick by the person with the hammer, and when they break a block, the co you'll be so much faster than them, you can just pick up the coins from them. So the funny part is, no one wants the hammer, and, but as the person with the hammer, you can't drop the hammer. So it has to be like taken from you or someone has to jump on you by accident. This, this game is funny. It feels, it feels kind of bad to be the person with the hammer, but it's good. Uh, mm. Actually, I take it back. It's go it's gonna go on the top of mediocre. I mean, it, now that I really think about it, you can bully the person with the hammer. It goes on top of mediocre. Ah, knock block tower. This is gonna go right next to ghost guess. This game requires functional skill. It requires good jump and punch timing. Basically, you have to punch out the um the the brown crates to get the treasure chest on top of the two thwomps that'll eventually get get stacked on top of each other it basically just requires good fast and precise jump uh kick slash punch timings again it it, it it tests a little bit of a skill there and it's conceptually a fine mini game sometimes it can be a little frustrating when you miss or fuck up the timing so be it it's conceptually a fine mini game shell game shell game is gonna go Ahead of keep away on all right. Shell game is also a one player mini game. Basically, one of these Koopa shells holds 10 coins. They'll show you at the beginning. Then they'll spin around and do the cup, the bean under the cup uh, game thing, a bobber that every, that every video game pretty much has. It's on the easy side to keep track of the Koopa. If your eyes aren't like super old and you're not an old man, you can keep track of them. It's not super duper hard. It's again, this is made for kids. They do give you a little bit of a challenge, you have to keep your eyes somewhat peeled and be paying attention, but... It's relatively easy to get the 10 coins. 
It's conceptually a fine minigame, though. Bowlover. Bowlover goes right ahead of Hot Bob Mom. Bowlover's a mediocre game. They improved this game in Mario Party 2. In Mario Party 1, every player you knock over loses five coins and you get the five coins. If you knock over one of the non-player pins, you get, um, you get one coin. Basically, the reason why this game is bad- actually, no, actually, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute, I hella lied. I hella lied, hold on. I'm just remembering, the, the, the team of three in this game don't get ten coins for a living, you just get nothing. I forgot, in Mario Party 2, Basically, they give the play they give the bowler two bowling balls or Koopa shells to throw at the players. If any of the human players or the actual game players, I guess I should say, live, that whole team wins. Never mind, the uh, never mind. The Mario Party 2 version is actually an alright minigame. The Mario Party 1 version, I hella lied, is actually going right above Coin Shower Flower. Actually, no. No, it goes below, because the people in the boat aren't harmed in Coin Shower Flower. They just get, like, one coin, that's it. People in this game are harmed and don't even win anything for getting out of it. Oh, wait a minute. Oh! Oh, I forgot to change this. This this goes ahead of Coin Shower Flower. I know, I'm, I'm, I'm mixing this all up. Uh, ever since I deleted the tier... I'm, I'm sorry, this goes ahead of Coin Shower Flower. This game's... This game's still janky, but it's... 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 It's fine. Never mind, yeah. The three players get nothing here, and the three players actively get herded here. That's right. Yeah. With no chance of winning coins yet. This game sucks. In Mario Party 1 and Mario Party 2, they make it a lot better. Box Mountain Mayhem. It's an alright game. This this game comes down to luck. Basically, you just attack a giant stack of brown boxes on the mount on this big mountain in a corner of a room. Ba and there's some boxes that hold five coins. Usually the ones that send you up and back when you suplex a box back to the middle of the stage. Usually has coin bags. Sometimes you can steal them from players if you just camp, but overall it's conceptually a fine game. Basically just attack just attack boxes and hope for the best. Unga bunga. Ah, castaways. Castaways. <sighs> castaways, castaways, castaways. This game does involve control stick spinning, although it's very sh it's very short and short burst, so it doesn't really hurt to play. This, this is weird. I sucked dick at, dick at this game during during the Mario Party competition, but that could be due to the emulator and, and the Xbox controller. I was a beast. I actually got the control stick pressure down as a kid on the actual N64. I was a beast at this game when I was a kid. Uh, when I was a kid, I would easily get over 40 coins at this game. I, I mastered the control stick pressure on the N64. On emulator and Xbox, it doesn't quite work right. So we all just struggle around and go, ah, a lot. I'm gonna, overall, I'm gonna put this game under... I'm gonna put this game in the middle of all right. On the actual N64, it's a fine game. I, like I said, I mastered as a kid. On emulator with Xbox controller, it doesn't work properly. But again, that's emulator. If I'm going back to my childhood memories, I mashed this game as a kid. So, it can be a little finicky though. Sometimes even on N64, it reads your pressure wrong. But old, old my memories don't fail me. I mashed this game as a kid, so something was right about it. So I'll put it in the middle of all right. Oh, you did put it under all right. So yeah, you're, you're using your old memories also. You're using natural N64 as the base. Good, good, good. Uh, Platform Peril. This game's alright. It does. It's basically an interesting platform challenge. We have to race across platforms. The more you short hop, the more you short hop across the platforms, the better, and the more ahead you'll get. Sometimes though, you can get unfairly blocked by these, these, these brown bricks that'll wedge you and block you. Sometimes, even sometimes the person can just have a straight line free all the way clear and get short hops and just win by just being luckier than not having to be, and not having to turn their direction from being blocked by a brown block. I'll put it at bottom of all right. It's fine. It, it, it can it can sometimes be unfair, but it's all right. Teetering Towers, I think, is a great mini game actually. It can go bottom of great. Teetering Towers, oh uh, no, actually no. Let me not. Let me hold on. Teetering um, um, Teetering Towers can go behind Ghost Guess actually. 
Teetering towers just ch just just test another skill of yours. There's nothing wrong with teetering towers. The key to teetering towers is you have to stand on the edge of the tower, either straight or diagonal, depending on where the next tower is, and you have to time your running and jump properly. It, again, it tests the skill. If it's hard, if it's hard, if it gets frustrating and you lose, sorry. There's, there's nothing mechanically wrong with teetering towers. I completed it every time I played the game during the competition. Not so humble brag. So where were we? Um, this one actually has Bumberball Maze. Uh, Bumberball Maze. You know what? Actually, funny enough, now that I can rate Bumberball Maze, it gets literal pain also. There's no point in playing it. I mean, yeah, I guess it's a cool challenge course and you get to keep your time. Oh, maybe it's a little harsh. Actually, no, 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 no. That, that, that's hella harsh. Um, it gets bottom of death. I mean, I mean, for a fun extra, it's fine. It's just, I don't go back to it too often. It's like, who cares? Who cares? There's no reward. It's not literal pain. It's not bad. It's just, who cares? Okay. All right, let's continue where we left off. Finally. Oh, yes, Shy Guy says it's the most iconic minigame in Mario Party 1. It returns to Mario Party 2 with the floating balloons up above the sky in the clouds. Even better, the, the two versions is just better because the Shy Guy mixes up harder in the second one and the and the atmosphere is better. But Shy Guy says, iconic minigame. Iconic pressuring minigame. The, the flag tricks. The pressure to get it right. The speed. Mushroom. Okay, no, no, no. Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. I'm gonna uh, bumble maze. Fine. Uh, I'll be. Uh, fine. I'll be nice to bumble maze. It goes on bottom of the B. B is conceptually fine minigame list. These minigames start to have problems. Bumble maze is a conceptually fine minigame. I just don't care. <laughs> to be rude about it. Um. Okay. Um. I. Mushroom Mix-Up, when I get to it... Oh, you know what? I'll just do it now. Mushroom Mix-Up is also an S-tier minigame. I put it lower than Shy Guy says because it's... It's new coat of paint in Mario Party 2 I like worse. I don't really like the lava and the more darker muted colors. It lost some of its charm of being on the open water and getting dragged up by a blooper. Like, like... Shy Guy says this coat of paint in Mario Party 2 is better. This coat of paint in Mario Party 2 got worse. I prefer the colorful mushrooms in the open sea rather than the muted hexagons in the fire. But still, phenomenal minigame. There's conceptually, there's conceptually nothing wrong with actually nothing mix up either because it literally no, no, nothing changes between this game and the next one. Even Shy Guy says gets a minor tune like a tune ups like the Shy Guy mixes up harder and shit. And they use a lack of two going across the screen for time, timing. I, I still give to Shy Guy says for having the better coat of paint in Mario Party 2. But literally just a coat of paint. Alrighty, moving on. Bobsled Run. Oh, again, a fantastic minigame. Bobsled Run probably gets bottom of A. There's nothing wrong with this. This, this minigame's great. This minigame's great. Uh, you basically make a mad button mashing dash at the beginning of the round. So again, button mashing skills involved. Uh, then, then, then you, then it's just all about steering and blocking off your opponent correctly on turns. They're speeding up. They're slowing down. There's not going over the edge. It's, it's conceptually a great minigame. To be honest, it can be a little slightly unfair. Usually, the person who gets ahead at the beginning uh, usually can use usually can out can usually just block the other player the entire time. But that came down to button mashing skill in the beginning, not just happenstance. So this does not lose ranking at all. It's just button mashing. Get good. Bombs Away! Bombs Away can go right underneath it, actually, in A tier. Bombs Away is a fantastic game. There's nothing There's nothing wrong with it. I, I, that's my fault line for every Mario Party 1 minigame, if you sort of noticed. Well, not everyone, but the ones that don't have nothing wrong with it. That kind of shows you how, again, how rough Mario Party 1 is. There's nothing wrong with Bombs Away. It's actually a great minigame. It's perfectly fair. Four players just jumping around on an island, making sure they don't get cannonballed directly or stunned on the island when the cannonballs hit. There's nothing wrong with this game. It's fucking great. <laughs> it's tense. You can you can sometimes screw other over players, which is fine. If you get underneath them, and they hop off your head into the water. This this mini game's great. Uh, bomb skip ball. This is gonna be rough for me. I love the concept of bomb skip ball to death. I love playing two on two uh, basketball as a Mario Party mini game. 
The problem is it's completely imbalanced. Usually the team that starts with the ball usually scores the ball due to a number of factors. One, it's hard to steal the ball from the opponent. You can only steal from them when they're on the ground and you punch them. You can't steal from them in midair. Or you jump on them. You can't steal from them in midair, and you can jump a lot in bomb basketball. Usually, usually the pe- usually the team that starts with the ball, you just run forward, jumps up, and then just scores the basket. So conceptually, mechanically, it's a not great mini game. Conceptually, it's a great mini game. Mechanically, it's not good. And even worse, the losing team has to give up ten coins to the Mario Party One mechanic of giving up coins to the winner. I'm gonna put it ahead of bowl over. I'm gonna put it here. For, I mean, it's gonna be low because I just explained mechanically what's wrong with the game, but. It's going to go ahead of bowl over because bowl over, you have literally no chance as the th- team of three to get coins or make or do anything or make it or make a comeback. And bomb ball, you can. It's unlikely, but you can. Bowl over still has it worse where the team of three literally can't do anything to win. There's no winning as the team of three, which makes it a very bad mini game. Arguably worse than tug of war. Now that I really think about it, bumper balls gets a hard F from me. Actually, you know what bumper balls, you know what? You know what? No, 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 no. Actually, you know what? Bumper Balls is actually literally pain. It goes in literally pain tier because we just fall asleep for 60 minutes. 60 seconds. Imagine. Bumper Balls always ends in a fucking tie. The island, the problem, the conceptual design with this minigame is the island's too big. They sort of improve this in Mario Party 2, but Mario Party 2 Bumper Ball still ends in a tie a lot of the time. But they, at least they make the islands different and smaller. The island in Mario Party 1 is way too fucking big. It's too big. It's just, even if one player gets knocked off, the other three or other two will just survive and just a draw. And and, and you can't bump people hard enough to get any advantage. And even if you even if you rev up speed, they'll just see you coming. It's basically, in a nutshell, it's very easy to play defensively, and it's just a 60-second time waster. It's not as harmful as, as Bash and Cash, which the one player is literally screwed over. It is just a 60 second painful nap. Uh, Deep Sea Divers. Deep Sea Divers is not I'm gonna put it right here. Deep Sea Divers is a 2v2 minigame that's not exactly pleasurable to play. It does involve rotating the control stick. It does involve rotating the control stick. Basically, one player swims down as the diver and has to grab a chest, and then swim up an A towards the boat. That's the one thing a lot of players forget. When they grab the chest as the diver, you have to swim up an A towards the boat. Otherwise, no matter how fast the uh, fisher reeler reels in by rotating the control stick, that's where the pain comes in. They can't get the other player up. A lot of people don't realize that as a mechanic, and Toad doesn't even explain it. They have to swim up towards the boat to give yourself the edge. So it takes a while for people to figure that out and they can get frustrated and not get it. And then even then there's a drowning mechanic where if you drown underwater or run out of air, you have to get reeled up to the surface. Some people don't even realize that either. So overall, frustrating minigame to play. You won't get it your first time. You'll get frustrated your first time. It doesn't come naturally to learn. There's control stick spinning. And hidden, and hidden mechanics that you may not know. Desert Dash. Desert Dash goes right ahead of Keep Away. Desert Dash is a pretty good minigame. It, again, it, it tests a big skill. Again, B, a lot of the minigames in B test a skill, like Ghost Guest, Heating Towers, Knock Block Tower, and other stuff. Desert Dash is about rhythmically timing control stick sideways pushes with your partner to race against a, a cross to the finish line up here. There's a lot, there's a lot to, uh, uh there's not a lot. They, they basically, it just basically just tests timing. Sometimes it can be frustrating to get the timing wrong, and even in the thumbnail, the, the, the people are falling over. Actually, the, aren't the, are these the exact thumbnails from the game itself when Toe chose the minigame? Anyway, I, I think I recognize this one in particular. Anyway, um, uh, basically, this game can be frustrating when the two people really can't uh, uh, match up timing together, but overall it's a fine minigame, it just tests a skill. If it's frustrating, sorry. <laughs> Hammer Drop. Hammer Drop's a pretty damn good minigame. Hammer Drop actually goes right ahead of Keep Away. Hammer Drop is a great minigame. It is, it is, it is pretty damn good. Basically a N64 model Lakitu, as we keep pointing out. 
or Hammer Bro, I'm sorry, Hammer Bro, as we keep pointing out, will drop coins, hammers, and money bags onto the tower here. And it's your job to basically beat people to the punch and collect them. You can jump, which is the key secret to this game. You jump over players' heads to collect Everybody's coins. Hey, Shafiki, thanks for the host. Overall, great game. Even if you fall off the tower, you get to keep the coins you collected so far. Sometimes, if there's only like seven seconds left and I see a coin bag that no one's collected going off the edge, I will dive after it to get the coin bag and just spend the rest of the six to five seconds just dead. It's fine. Like, whatever. It, it's all worth it for the coin bag. <laughs> Mario Banson. Mario Banson is a great minigame. Actually, no. Actually, let me... I was gonna put an A tier, but let me not cap. Mario Banson is still a great minigame. It's just that being the conductor can be a little bit of a bitch because it's not well explained to you. If you're one of the instrument players, you're essentially fine. Because you, you just have to get down a button timing in a guitar in a guitar hero sort of sense. Being the conductor though is fucking annoying with its timing. It does it doesn't teach you well how to become conductor or how to play conductor. And I can understand that can be a lot of it be frustrating for a lot of people. And the minigame island forced you to be conductor, so you learn how to do it there. Uh, but once once but if all four people know what they're doing in Mario Bandstand, it's a fun minigame. It's basically just being pressured just to have the best timing. Overall, fantastic minigame. And again, Mario Benson returns in Mario Party 2 as a 2v2 minigame. And you don't have to be conductor in Mario Party 2. So again, another minigame that Mario Party 2's bandstand would be in A tier. This can go right here, because there's still nothing super wrong with it. Again, conductor is a bitch to play. Oh, crane game. Crane game can be top of... Basically, this game is a 1v3 minigame where you watch one player get 10 coins from the chest, which is guaranteed, essentially, if they just have any speed mashing A, which is not hard. Great game is a game where you can either pick up somebody, a player, and steal a third of their coins, or just get a chest for 10 coins. The grabbing is a little finicky regarding players, so no one, so the person as the crane never wants to fight against the other players. Because even even if you're sometimes faster button mashing than them, sometimes they can still escape. Sometimes the game goes easy on the three players on the ground. It's it's finicky. And to be fair, you don't want to be the one player who goes after a player and then gets beaten in button mashing. Then then you're flasted as fuck and your pride is smashed. No one wants that to happen, so everyone always goes after the chest. Even me. Even me. So this game is basically one person, uh, three people watch one player get a chest for ten points. This, this is perfectly fine in F tier. Hot Rope Jump. Hot Rope Jump? Hot Rope Jump is a great, is a great minigame. Is a damn good minigame. Actually, hold on. Let me go back a little. Iconic, great, alright. Oh, the B tier is alright. Yeah, so, okay. So this is alright, this is great. Um, Hot Rope Jump is a great minigame. Uh, there's nothing wrong with this game. Uh, conceptually at all. Hop Jump Jump is a pain in the ass. It is, but to be honest, it's sort of just a get-good minigame. It tests rhythmic, rhythmic jumping. It tests just rhythmic jumping. That's all it is. Just, just, just tie. It, the, the rope speeds up fast in the final five uh, volleys, and basically, just basically, first you can full jump over the flame, but then you have to start timing short hops. It basically just tests jump timing and get get good. Essentially, there's nothing mechanically wrong with this minigame at all. Even if, and, and this game, this minigame is easy compared to Mario Party 2. If you pass 20 jumps, everyone still living gets 10 coins. Even better, oh uh, no, and, and but if you hit, but actually no, I'm sorry, I lied. Every if 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 all players, because I forgot in this in Mario Party 1, when one player hits the flame, they lose the coins. Um. If everyone lives to the 20 jumps, then you all get 10 coins. whoop de doodle If one player hits the flame, though, they lose 5 coins. I don't think anybody else gets anything, which is a little... I guess, actually, it's a little weird. Hmm. Actually, you're right. I take it back. I sort of... I'm sort of forget... No, 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 no. I lied. The one player who hits the flame loses 15 coins and, and, and punishes them. That's right. Uh, okay. Okay, you know what? I'm sorry. I, I I was capping for a second. The Mario Party 2 version of this game, which which is now just which is just an endurance game, is eight is 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 a tier as fuck. 
the Mario Party 1 version can, um, the Mario Party 1 version can go ahead of, 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 fuck, bad minigame. The, the, because it actively hurts the one player that loses pretty badly, I, I won't say it's a great minigame. The Mario Party 2 version's a great minigame. Limbo Dance. Okay. This, you're, you guys are gonna kill me for this. But Limbo Dance. Limbo Dance as actually here. Limbo Dance is a great minigame. Yes! Limbo Dance is a great game. People fail at it all the time because they don't know how the jumping- Limbo Dance. Limbo Dance is a great minigame. It's frustrating. People lose at this all the time because they don't know how the jumping works. To be fair, the actual game mechanics, which is literally just one button, you can play this game one-handed with one finger. But to be fair, it's not fully well explained to you. But once you do understand, it's a fine minigame. Basically, you have to keep as low as possible by keeping your jump height low by pressing A, but not too many times that you fall on your back to go through the limbo maze. Not maze, a limbo track. It's a great minigame, it's fine. People, unfortunately, just don't understand how it works and get frustrated a lot, but it's it's mechanically a fine minigame. Okay, thanks, Mike. Whew. This is no, this is a great mini game. It sucks that people again. I'm not I'm not being I'm not being rude or insulting, but it sucks that people don't know how to play it. It's a fine mini game. Get good. Um. Anyway, pedal power. Uh, pedal power. Pedal power is bottom of F. It is a control stick mini game. But you know what the bad side is? Only one player gets to be in pain. At least in Tug of War, all four people get to be in pain. Pedal Power, only just one person gets to be in pain. And that's no fun. And it's not super hard if you sacrifice your palm. It's not super hard. You get the ten coins. So you watch one person in pain, and that sucks. At least in Tug of War, you're all in pain and can all enjoy the fun. Oh, uh, Running of the Bulb. Running of the Bulb gets bottom of A. It's my favorite work together minigame. It is way better than Keep Away. It's more mechanically involved than Keep Away. It's also longer. But basically, running with the bulb. You basically, the three people who are not carrying the bulb have to punch ghosts. So the three people get to do a lot of stuff. And punch ghosts and shit. While the one player with the bulb tries to avoid getting taken over. Or avoid taking over party members that'll steal the bulb from them. Keep Away is a great minigame. Sure, it's one of those economy minigames where everyone wins 10 coins. But it's fun. You get to punch ghosts and shit. <laughs> it's, it's fun. And, and, and everyone gets a little, uh, stimulus package. <laughs> Slot machine. Slot machine kind of sucks, Dookie. I, I know the timing of slot machine is still just not a fun game to play. It's not a fun slot machine to play. Basically, you just line up any three symbols you can. If you don't line up anything or you miss anything, at least one, you're just automatic. You have to get this. This game is this mini game's a feast or famine. Either you get coins or you get nothing at all. It's, and as a slot machine, it's pretty dull. It's not amazing. It's a one-player mini game though, so if you get it, kind of sucks you didn't get whack a plant or any of the easy ones worth ten coins. This this game does give you a chance to win fifteen or twenty coins, I believe. But, again, you just have to have timing. It, mm, actually, now that I'm really thinking about it, it can go bottom of C. I was a little harsh towards it. it I have to think about it like this. This minigame tests a skill, which is timing and looking at the slots. I can't be too hard on it. it it's fine. It's just boring. It's just boring. This minigame's hella easy. This minigame's on the harder side, but again, it tests a skill. I can't be mad at it for conceptually testing a skill of yours. It's just fucking boring, though. Musical Mushroom. There's nothing conceptually wrong with Musical Mushroom. Sometimes the treasure chest hit detection's a little janky. But overall, this minigame's perfectly fine. It's probably gonna go... Sometimes the, tre sometimes the treasure chest can be a little janky on, his on who gets to it first. Oh, uh, it can go under Hot Rope Jump. Oh, uh, hmm. No, 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 I take it back. You can go ahead and hot rope jump. Again, hot rope jump penalizes the, the one player pretty bad. Musical Mushrooms is fine. It's just like Treasure Divers, essentially. But not everyone can get coins, though. I know, only one person can get coins. It's fine. It's, just, it's a little on the basic side. It's fine. But the Treasure Chest hitbox can be a little janky. It's fine. Ah, Paddle Battle. Paddle Battle, as far as things are concerned, Paddle Battle is probably my favorite 
your control stick minigame because you work as a team and there's chances for comebacks. Basically, you have to you have to you have to you have to paddle and and reel the other player towards the other shore and get poked by a spear to lose coins. And it can go back and forth pretty easily. Uh, mm, no, no, mm, I don't know. Mm. I'm having trouble. Mm, I don't know. I'm having trouble deciding. You know. Mm. You know what? No, I'm sorry. I'm capping a little. It goes. It goes underneath. It goes underneath tug of war. If someone wins tug of war very fast, it's at least over. Pata battle still. It goes until the very end of the finish line on the river. Like these two games have. It doesn't end until you either lose or, or until it finishes with a time limit in some way, shape, or form. Either the ghost catches you, you light up the light bulb, or this always goes until the finish line. At least tug of war. If someone just outright wins, it just ends shortly. So, and even then, the backdrop's cool. I, uh, Tug of War's atmosphere is cooler. Um, Skateboard Scramper. Skateboard Scramper. Oh, uh, this isn't... Um, this is not an amazing minigame. This minigame is bad for one huge reason. It basically, when everyone's at the end, it just chooses a winner just randomly. I, I can't get... Th I don't understand how it chooses a winner. In Mario Party 2, I understand it gives you dips and hills and, and steep hills to jump up. It, there's at least there's at least ways to get distance in Mario Party 2's version of this game, which makes it way better. In Mario Party 1, it's just weird. There's this long stretch of flat ground with no skill involved at the end. And you're just mashing B for your life and just chooses a winner. I, I really don't know how it does it. I won this game more as a kid, I swear. So I, I kind of used to like this as a kid. Also, skateboarding is cool. I don't know. It just... I, I, I don't know. It's, I guess I just realized it's not great as an adult. I swear, some people can be button button mashing faster, though. It's it's weird. It, it, it just chooses a random winner. But at least everyone can get five coins from it. You can jump and get the coin bag, so everyone can get five coins. Oh, and then Topsy Turvy. This is a great minigame, actually. This is a damn good minigame because it tests a skill. Angle, angle, angling. And well, Mike loves this minigame. Uh, Topsy Turvy tests a big skill. Uh, weight and, and, and angle balancing to have a shell uh, flip over pieces that reveal a picture. Again, this minigame was brought back in Mario Party 2. So yeah, the, the, again, it's funny. They realized all the good Mario Party minigames to bring back in Mario Party 2. This is a great minigame. I'm going to put it right below, behind Bombs Away, because I like Bombs Away. It's more and more back. But this is a great minigame. There's nothing mechanically wrong with this minigame at all. It just tests the skill. Weight and balance checking. That's all. Get good. Again, that's sort of my explanation for a lot of these top-level minigames. Well, these are iconic because everyone knows how to play these. That's, a lot, that's kind of my explanation for all the A... The, the A rank minigames, except for running of the ball, was just a really good stimulus check. Like slot car derby, uh, push the control stick, hold, press down on the gas at the right times, get good, and learn the track. Uh, crazy cutter, trace the line correctly, get good. Limbo dance, learn when to go down and how far to go down, and keep the momentum, get good. Bobsled run, button mash in the beginning, block out your opponent in at the at the track, get good. Bombs away, avoid cannonballs. Don't get bopped off the course by your opponent's heads when you land on them. Get good. Topsy turvy. Weight and balance checking. Get good. Yeah, that that's what these these mini games are great. Well, these are of course phenomenal. These are these mini games are great. They just they just test the skill. So does teetering towers. See, there's nothing exceptionally wrong with ghost kiss and teetering towers and knockout tower. It tests the skill. Yeah, tests the skill. Um. Okay. So yeah, it's kind of funny. My two hate, most hated minigames in this game are not control stick spinning. Ain't that a take? Don't get me wrong, I don't like control stick spinning. But one one versus three bashing cash and bumble balls is literal pain. Literal emotional pain. Again, I think Shy Guy says this is one of the best classic minigames of all time. It's Code of Pain, Mario Party 2 is better. I would take the control stick spinning any day over these. I love pain. I'm a Naruto fan. <laughs> I I live in pain. You think I'm joking? I'll do it right now. Let's go. Yeah, I'm, I, I just imagine I'm playing Tug of War now. Let's go. I'll do it again. You don't don't test me. I'll do it again. 
Oh yeah, I feel that burn. Yeah, I'm playing, I'm playing tug of war right now. Let's go. Ah, there we go. I got, I got. See, I got a good redness on my palm already. Oh, that felt good. 